All right, today we have probably one of the most requested tutorials ever, and it's an FOV slider in Fortnite Creative. And today I'm going to show you exactly how it's done, but couldn't be done without the help from Hypex, who actually teached me a lot about this and showed me how it's actually done. Big shout out to Hypex, I'm pretty sure he doesn't need any more followers, but you know, leave him some love, he's actually insane in Fortnite Creative. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's get right into it and let's see what we need first. The first thing we actually need is two devices. And the first device that we need here is we can click on the Fortnite and then click on devices. And we're going to look for a trigger device here. Um, and this one is to activate the sequence that we're going to start to create our FOV. So this can technically be anything. If you have a little bit more experience with creative, you can use a button or whatever else you can activate something with. Um, but in our case, we're going to use a trigger device. And we also need a sequence. Same option, Fortnite devices, and we need the cinematic sequence device here. So... And that is actually all we need for our devices. The next thing we need is we click on our content browser here. And um, this might be named differently for you, but it should be the default thing that you have here. Because in here we can actually create a blueprint classes and we need one to create our FOV effect. The first thing we need to do is right click on the little empty window here, then go to blueprint class and then this window will pop up. Usually it should look like this and you will see the camera shake base right here. If you do not see it, you can also type it in top of here in the searching bar, um, but we need the camera shake base. Select that and it will be popping up into your content browser. We can also rename that to let's say FOV, so we know which one this, which is always good to name things how they should be named. And now we can click right into it. So we will be greeted with a pretty empty window. There's not a lot going on here. And the first thing we have to do is actually change the camera shake pattern. Usually we'd use this for something else, but in our case, we can a little bit abuse this one to create some FOV um, selection. So we're gonna select the wave camera shake pattern here. And now we see we have a bunch more options. The first thing is just changing a bunch of numbers to zero and that is going for the location and the rotation. So go in here and change every single number that you see to zero. So zero, zero, go to the X, zero, zero, and also make sure that this one is set to zero as well. Same for the Y, zero, zero, and zero. And as it would be, obviously zero, zero, and zero. We can close the location, open the rotation, and yet again, change every single number to zero. So we have a nice and clean zero rotation on everything. Make sure that you obviously also do it for the yawn and the pitch. So, and uh, for the roll, I mean, and uh, we should be good to go. So now that you change every single number to zero, um, we can move on to the important button that is the FOV. So in the FOV, we'll be greeted with the amplitude and this one is actually your FOV. So whatever FOV you want to have, um, you can change that to like, let's say to 120. So that will be an FOV of 120. If you want to make this higher or lower, you can change that in here however you want. The frequency needs to be changed to a very small number. It doesn't have to be particularly this exact number here, but it needs to be somewhere in that range. So make sure that you change it to a very small one. Also make sure that you have the initial offset type to a zero as well. The duration on the other hand needs to be changed to a very high number. So you can put a bunch of zeros here and yet again, it doesn't have to be the exact same number. Just make sure it's a very, very, very high one. Uh, and then it will be fine. So uh, you can see that sometimes it auto uh, adjusted. It doesn't really matter. Um, the only thing that matters though is that you set the blend time to zero and to zero. And with that, we are already done here. There's nothing much we can change here. Make sure that you compile and obviously save and we're good to go with this one. Once that is said and done and you have your FOV here, everything is safe. Make sure that you always save in between. So next thing we have to do is put our FOV into the map, but we cannot just simply drag and drop it in here. We need to actually add something where we can put that in. So for that, we can go to this little cube with a plus sign over here, open it up and then go to cinematic and camera shake source actor. You can see now that we have this like little like sonar icon, you can say in the map and um, where we can now put in our camera shape. You will also then see that you have a new actor in your map now. And if you select that actor, you will be greeted off the, with the settings here. And you can see camera shake, we can put in our FOV. The only things that we need to change in the settings here, besides obviously making sure that the camera shake is in there, is that we change this to zero and we change this one 
to yet again an insanely high number. So just put it whatever big number you can come up with. And in the end, it should look something like this. Inner radius should be zero or whatever number. I think it doesn't really matter what the inner radius is. And the outer radius should be a very high number. Also make sure that the camera shake is your FOV. We are already halfway, we are already halfway through and there's not a lot of, all right. We are already halfway done. The next thing we have to do is create a level sequence, which we can put into our sequencer, our cinematic sequencer. So we're gonna go right click again on our content browser, go into the um, cinematics tab here and add a level sequence. All right, so now that we have our level sequence, which I named FOV sequence, um, we can click into it. And now we agree with a level sequence. The first thing we have to do is make this insanely big again. Basically, what you want to do is make this as big as possible. So you'll just like scroll down a bunch of numbers and then it will basically set to whatever number is here. Make sure that your timeline is obviously as long as this number as well. So also make sure that your sequence is also playing as long as you made it here. So make sure that you set this all the way to the end. All right, so now that your level sequence is the maximum time and it is set to the maximum. So your red bar is over here. And um, we need to go to the plus track icon over here, press it, and then we need to add a time dilation track. This will speed up your map. So if you ever want to create something where your map goes faster, this is how you can do it. So what we need to do with the time dilation here is set this to an insanely high number, which is not two, as you can see. Two is running pretty fast. 10 is also running pretty fast, but we need to set that to 3000 um, or higher. But um, basically 3000 should be fine enough. But if I set this to 3000, you're gonna see that um, yeah, it's going crazy fast. So we're going to close out quickly here. We do not have to do anything in here as well. Make sure that you obviously save it and, and now close out here. So we have normal sky again, but, but if you close out and everything worked perfectly fine, you should be able to place your cinematic sequence in your cinematic sequencer. Uh, for that, we can click on the cinematic sequence device in your outline here and select it in here. We do not need to change any other settings because we're gonna do that in verse and that is very important. Don't be scared, you will get the code. You can just copy and paste and it will work perfectly fine. Um, but we need to use this in verse. That's why we do not change anything in the device itself. All right, so now the last step is to create a verse device, which is also not super complicated, but it is a little bit of verse. Um, the first thing we have to do is go to our verse explorer over here and then we create a new verse file. So we can name this uh, FOV since we already added it and we can start creating it. Now we see our FOV verse file over here. If everything worked perfectly fine, you'll be greeted with the uh, visual code window. You have your first verse code here. Um, and if you have that here, you just need to copy and paste the code that I will put in the description. I'll quickly explain how this code works so you know what to change if you want to change something. But technically all you need to do is just you know, copy and paste it in and then make sure that you follow the rest of the steps, which we're almost at the end, guys. So what you want to do before you copy and paste, you want to select everything besides your first class, which you created here. And we're gonna delete all of this and then you're gonna copy and paste the code in the description. Uh, you made it exactly right. You should get scoring lines on the Fortnite characters here. That is because we haven't put in the module for the Fortnite characters. So what you want to do here is copy this first line, go copy, and then we can put in the same line again. And instead of devices, we're gonna have characters. Uh, make sure that it's characters and not character. And now everything should be good to go. And uh, you can basically already use this code. So I quickly explain what's going on here. So you have a little bit of understanding what we're doing here and you can maybe change it to your liking. The first thing is obviously we need to add two devices, which are obviously our trigger, which starts the whole thing. And we have our level sequence, which is the cinematic device, which holds the whole magic behind it. So if you want to, for example, change this to a button, you need to make sure that you obviously replace everything that is a trigger device with a button here. And, and basically just from a device standpoint, what is going to happen here is that we tell our trigger device as soon as we shoot it or interact with it, with this little line here, that we should start playing our cinematic sequence here. Um, then we're gonna set it into a sleep for a thousand seconds, which is gonna to be like kind of like overhauled with the 3000 time dilation that we put in. So it's basically running only one second. And then we're gonna stop the, the sequencer and we're gonna also release the character from Stasis, which means that I cannot move because otherwise the character will just fall through the floor, which we don't want. So we need to make sure that as soon as we interact with the trigger, we put our character in a basically still position. It, they cannot move for one second or even less than one second. All right, we start our sequence. We're gonna put it into sleep for 1000 seconds, which is basically just one second because we sped up the time. And then we stop the level and we release obviously the character so they can just 
walk around normally. Sounds super complicated and it is, and technically creating an FOV would be way easier if we would just have access to the camera, but uh, we do not have, so we have to find, uh, you know, workarounds. So if you saved everything, make sure that you build your verse code. So we'll make sure that you build verse code here. And, and now you should have a new little tab over here, which has creative devices, and we can put this out. If we click on our verse device, we see that we have the trigger and the level sequence. So make sure that we select the trigger and we also select the right sequence. From here on, we're done. We can basically start the game and see if it worked. And now if you run into our trigger device, we should be seeing a nice FOV slider. Obviously it's not the craziest of any that I choose here, but you can obviously go as much and as crazy as you want. And uh, yeah, that is basically how you can create your own FOV slider in Fortnite.